What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in this video we're going to be talking about phasing and uh, how to implement phasing with topography inside of Revit. So if you don't know, phasing is basically introducing multiple phases to your project. It's really good when it comes to renovations because you have some sort of an existing building and then you have some new construction that you add to that. So Revit has the ability to uh, divide that into multiple phases and this is really useful when it comes to topography because when it comes to your landscape you're always going to have some phasing you're always going to be changing the topography in order to accommodate your building so you always have your existing site kind of as is and then you have your modified new uh, new construction site that you that you have so in this video i'm just going to be going quickly over that how to introduce phasing uh, to landscape uh, now this is a topic that i cover in depth uh, in my site design and coordination in revit course i'm going to link it up down just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above this is a course where i go kind of in depth slowly step by step explaining pretty much any er, anything and everything there is to know about site design and coordination inside of Revit. So check it out if you're interested. Also, as part of that course, I explain how to use the environment plugin for Revit. This is a plugin that allows you to utilize Revit and building information modeling to landscape uh, architecture. Uh, so I have extra two chapters inside of this course where I go over that and when you get the course you actually get an extended trial uh, to this uh, to this plugin. Uh, now if you want to get the environment plugin, if you use the coupon code uh, over here, so just this coupon code, you will get an extended license. So you get the license and then it's actually extended by 55 days, which is a really good offer. So if you're interested in that, follow the link in the description just below the video and then also up in the cards above. And also uh, towards the end of this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the environment plugin kind of in action. I'm going to be showing you a couple of features how to randomly scatter trees on your site, multiple types of families, uh, it's a really cool tool, and then also uh, how to show in your section view uh, kind of the, the difference between kind of phases uh, and when you make some modifications modifications to the ground. So uh, that's going to be kind of in the second half of this video. Okay, now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit and let's now quickly explain how does phasing work with landscape. So here you can see I have this landscape and then you'll see that for phasing and I'm not going to go too much into that. I I'm only going to be explaining how it kind of works with landscape. So with phasing, you can have phasing both for model elements such as this topography but also for your views such as this 3d view so for example this particular 3d view if i go down you will see that here uh, all the way down here we have phasing and the phase is new construction so by default everything is going to be in new construction in revit just something to keep in mind and if i switch to existing and hit apply this is going to kind of disappear just because uh, well uh, this was modeled as new construction now, if I select this topography, you will see that this topography has been created in new construction. And then the phase demolished, so if you demolish something, it's currently set to none. Well, I actually want to create this topography in my existing, so I want to use this as the existing site. So I'm just going to select that and turn that into existing and hit apply. So now it turns into this kind of weird grayed out view and that's because currently we're in our new construction phase if I go back into existing and hit apply now it's visible over here kind of in the regular uh, view mode okay so now how do we make the adjustment well we actually have to duplicate our topography and create a new topo surface which is only going to be for that new phase so kind of the modified site so what you want to do is you want to go here to massing and site and we have a tool that's going to duplicate your topography in order to accommodate phasing and that is the graded region tool so what you want to do here is just click on the graded region tool let's cancel out of this here it's going to ask you do you want to create a new turbo surface exactly like the existing one 
or do you want to create a new one that only has kind of the perimeter points, which is kind of only the points on the outside. Here that would be just four corners. I want to use this one and in most cases you're going to go with the top option just because it's going to give you more, well it's going to give you the exact same surface and this would kind of flatten everything out which in most cases you don't want. So let's just go with this one and then you want to select that topography and this is what happens. So now you get a new surface that has been created. Okay, so now for this surface, uh, let's change that to new construction and then hit apply, click finish, and there we go. So now let's see, this is an existing, if I go to new construction, we have this one. So let's see what's going on here. So if I go back to existing, Okay, so we have the original one that was created and existing and then it was demolished and existing. I don't like this. I like to demolish that in the new construction phase. So I'm just going to change that to new construction. So we have a nice little topography here. And then when I switch to uh, new construction, it's going to uh, just show that new phase. Actually, it has two of these. So if I move one, out of the way, you'll see that here we have two. Let me just go back here for a second. It might, might look weird, but if you only want to show the elements that are in that particular phase, you just want to change the uh, phase filter to show complete. So it's only going to kind of show you the final elements. Okay, so now we're in the new construction phase and let's make a modification to this site. So I'm just going to select this site and then I'm going to go to the site plan. And what I like to do here in the site plan, you can notice that they've added this arc. So here I want to have my building kind of inside of this arc. So I want to modify this topography. So what I like to do for that is first select the topography, go to edit surface, and then I like to add multiple points just in order to ensure that the site will kind of bend to the way that I want to modify it. So let me show you how that works. You go to place points and instead of going with absolute elevation, you go relative to surface. When you go with relative to surface with zero elevation, it's basically going to add multiple points without actually changing the topography. It's just going to add additional points. So if I just start adding points like this and I'm just going to kind of go all the way around outside of this arc. So perhaps like that. There we go. Now, if I go to the 3D view, you will see that we have added those points and they're just kind of in that same place. Nothing really has changed. And that's exactly what you want to do. Now I'm going to go back to site, hit the escape key a couple of times. This point I want to delete because it's kind of in the middle. And then I want to see. So if I select this, this is the at elevation of three meters. So actually I just want to flatten this whole thing out inside of this arc. So what they can do is just, for example, select this point, go to copy and copy it multiple times. So I can place it here. I can, let's use the tab key. There we go. So I can just kind of start placing this all the way around inside of that arc, just like that. There we go, hit the escape key a few times. And now if I go to the 3D view, this is what that looks like. So you can see that I've added these points on the outside in order to control how this surface is going to bend. If I didn't do this, if I didn't have these points, so if I delete these, see how weird it would be. It would go all the way out to the next line of points. And I don't want that. I want to control where I make that kind of where I dig into the earth. And there we go. So now we have made that modification. If I just hit finish, this is what that looks like. And now finally, if I go back here to properties, if I go to phase, change to existing, hit apply, it looks like this in existing. And if I want new construction, apply, this is what that looks like. Also, you can change the phase filter to show all and now it's going to kind of overlap those two surfaces. And here you can see with these dashed lines where that kind of original surface was. So you can use this for presentations, uh, but it tends to look a little bit silly with these overlaps. See, it looks like kind of like a bug. So I don't like using that uh, too much. So just keep that in mind. Okay, now, as I've promised in the beginning,
Okay, now, as I've promised in the beginning of this video, I am going to be showing you some really useful tools and features from the environment plugin. So let me let me show you that. Uh, what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to switch this to show complete, just like that. And also I have applied a section box here, so I'm just going to turn that off so we can kind of see the entire, uh, the entire site. Okay, anyways, now let's go to the environment tab. So when you install the environment plugin, you get this environment tab. And here you get all of the tools and features that are available. As you can see, there are quite uh, quite a few of them. There are, there are many. Uh, and then uh, what, what I want to show you is the area scatter tool. Uh, so the area scatter tool allows you to uh, basically uh, scatter uh, area elements such as trees all over your topography. Uh, so if you want to mimic uh, a forest, instead of kind of going and manually placing multiple trees, obviously that would uh, take a lot of time. You, in a lot of cases, you just want to kind of scatter it randomly and that's exactly what this tool does. So I'm just going to click here on area scatter. That's going to bring up the area scatter menu. So first we want to select our topo surface. Uh, here, as you can see, you can either select the surface or uh, you can uh, select a scatter group. In this case, let's just select the surface and apply that selection. Uh, next, we have the scatter selection. So you can either pick out trees that you already have on your model. In this case, I don't, so I can either pick that out here or alternatively if you want to use multiple families you have this advanced selection option and that's going to bring up this uh, menu that allows you to pick out multiple tree types so here I can select I'm just going to be using these uh, architecture design trees these are actually part of my uh, part of my template so if you want to check these out uh, they are available as, uh, as part of my architecture design template so anyways I'm just going to select these trees here we can set up the ratio I'm fine with having the ratio basically same amount of all three of these uh, then we can apply this and before I apply keep in mind that you can add or remove elements so you don't have to have just three you can have two you can have five it's really up to you anyways let's just hit apply here and then here we have the scatter settings. So you can kind of type in the distances here, but what I prefer is the irregular method. So it's just going to kind of scatter them for you. Uh, here you can specify the number of elements. So I can say, let's go with 20 trees. Uh, the placement level, obviously we want to host them on the surface, not one of the levels and then finally you can add an offset and you can combine them which kind of creates the assembly out of the whole thing so then you can kind of select the scatter group later on in order to edit it and and so on so i'm actually quite happy with these settings as is so i'm just going to hit apply and it's basically going to apply that scatter and this is what that looks like as you can see it's pretty cool it kind of <laughs> uh, uh, basically uh, places those trees all around our site uh, so I, I really like the uh, I really like this and then uh, also if you're not happy with this for, for example you, you see what it looks like and then you're like oh, okay maybe I can fit a few more trees I can say okay let's try 25 and then hit apply so it's going to give you uh, another kind of scatter so you can kind of play around with this a little bit uh, until you kind of figure out the the, the best uh, layout for for your scatter so let's just hit finish and that's then going to kind of save that save that scatter. Uh, also, one more uh, really cool uh, tool that's available, especially when it comes to uh, phasing, uh, and that is uh, this here tool. So it's grayed out, it's called Surface Profile, so we have to be in a section view to see that. So let's create a section view. So I'm just going to create a quick section view here, so just like this. Okay, something like that. Let's see if I don't cut through any of the trees okay and then I can extend it all the way out okay so here we just have a simple uh, a simple section so what you can do with uh, this uh, uh, with this tool the surface profile what it does it uh, basically generates a detail line that follows uh, the topography now it's usually really useful because then you can host uh, your uh, you can host your spot elevations there so you can kind of add spot elevations which just don't go to 
uh, just don't go to topography, cannot be hosted on topography, but also it can be used with phasing to show what it was like before. So let me show you. If I go here uh, and if I just go to my phase filter, go back to existing, hit apply, this was kind of back in existing. Now if I go here to uh, environment, if I go to surface profile, uh, here I can select the surface, hit finish, it's going to bring up this little menu where we can select which line style we want to use. I prefer hidden, then we click OK. And now basically here we have that hidden line, see? We have that dashed line over this line. And now when I switch the face filter to new construction, or the face to new construction, now you can see that line over here. And also as a bonus, you can host your spot elevations wherever you want, because now you have something to host them on, which is this detail line, which is really, really cool. So there you go. Those are just uh, a couple of tools that are included on the environment, uh, on the environment tab uh, uh, with the environment plugin. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about site design and coordination, I would like to encourage you to check out the entire uh, course. As I said, it's going to be included just below this video in the description and also up in the cards above. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.